So the, they're cooking in the ultrasound. Um, I haven't cleaned up the case yet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But somebody was asking me about my little notes that I stick in my bins. So let me talk about that a little bit. I have these little plastic bins. You can use anything, Tupperware bins. I think these came out of frozen dinners. So you can see we eat a few frozen dinners because I got a few different containers, which is good because I sort everything out, all my hardware from my front of my movement and my back, and then time side, strike side, I, I keep it separate. It's not difficult on something like this when there's only three wheels on one side and one's got one big bump and one's got a warning pin and the other one's the great wheel. I mean, it's not as hard, but I started doing it when I started um, because it was hard to me to, to keep track of what parts went where. I got that put together wrong, it looks like. Um, so, I did little drawings. Strike side, time side. And I would draw it. I can't even turn that because I've got it put together wrong. Um, I would draw it how it looked when I turned it to look from that side. So time side, the great wheel's down here. And then strike side, the great wheel's on this end. Just so that I could look at it when I was putting it back together and see which way the, the wheels needed to go and which way the pinions went. Instead of having to stop and pull out my phone and pull up pictures and try to find the right one because there's like 20 pictures in there of different angles. So that's all these little pictures are. Um, and if there's something different like this little plastic lever. I drew it to see which way it went. It got kind of wet when I was cleaning stuff, but anyway, to know that um, my thing's upside down. To know that which way this needed to point. I don't think it can even go the other way. It's got to be long enough to come through the front, and I think that side's got a little short piece on it, with, and it gets fatter, so it would only go one way. But I just like to double check with stuff like that. So anyway, the movement came out pretty decent in the um, ultrasound. I did put a little mother's polish on it because it had been lacquered at some point. Um, most of the lacquer came off. I had it at 40 degrees for 10 minutes and most of it had started to come off, but there were a few places that had not and that's what gives you the spotty finish on your Brass is if you don't get all the lacquer off, you got places that it's still stuck down and the, and it's trying to peel off and it's a different color and it's noticeable. So I put it back for another 10 minutes just to get it good and clean and then I used the Mother's Mag and aluminum polish on it just to shine it up good. And um, I've just stuck the parts in here. I haven't tightened down the screws really. Um, I did a lot of cleaning on the chain here. It was, it was probably the worst chain that I've worked on. Um, had some rust on it. You can see it's, it's not even really brass. It's steel, which makes me think it was more late 40s, post-World War II kind of time frame. Um, but there were some links that were open. Um, I took this chain and I put it in my dirty solution to get the first of the dirt out and scrubbed it and scrubbed it and scrubbed it in my hands and it'd still come out brown. And then I put it in the ultrasound and cleaned it. And then when I got it out and I drug it on a paper towel, I still had black streaks on the paper towel. So I've used um, some little green scratchy stuff to get the rust off. And then I went through and pinched my ones that weren't shut all the way. And um, I used a little piece of tissue. You could use any kind of little paper that... Um, really finds the ones that are sticking out. If you drag it down, it'll snag a little piece of that paper off and, set, and you'll know exactly which one you need to work on. So, um, but I got the chains ready to go. Um, when the plates came out, um, I did do all the, the pivot holes. This, is, this was my toothpicks from the pivot holes after it had been through the ultrasound. So, and this movement really didn't look dirty, but it had a, a pretty good bit of dirt. And, um, I like these wooden stick Q-tips. I can put them in the bigger holes and run them around and you can see circles of 
dirt that I got out of the bigger holes too. I haven't done the levers yet. I've still got to do inside each one of these pipes. Everything's going to be nice and clean so that it falls like it should because you don't want to oil these. <clears throat> and then after I did all that stuff, I worked on polishing the pivots up. Um, I used a couple of stones and did it by hand, um, just turning them on the stones and you can put them in a pin vise and, and roll them on your stone. Um, the, the, the verge um, pinion on one side was pretty deeply scored. That was the only, only one that I found that um, looked like it had some wear on it. So I don't know how much this clock was used or if that was just for me using it for the last year. And maybe it didn't have oil. I don't know. Um, but the, the pinions were so tiny that it was definitely challenging to get together. It didn't want to sit in the holes good. Normally you can kind of set them in the holes, put the plate on, put a little couple turns on your nuts, and um, there's enough pressure to just slide them a little bit. I didn't want any pressure on it because the things were so tiny they were going to bend. Um, and then I'd have to fix that. So... Um, Anyway, it was a little bit challenging to put together, and I can see that i got to open it up and fix this, because this has to be on the outside of that. So, we'll do that in a minute, and um, I'll finish getting these clean, and we'll get the rest of the outside and backside, front side things back on. Well, you know, life happens, and so it's been like four days since I've gotten back to this movement. So, I don't even know where I want to start. I did uh, put that little lever on the other side of this little arm. But without anything for the warning pin to hit, there's nothing to make it pull back in there. Um, I'm pretty happy with the spring action. It pulls it back even when it's upside down, so... Um, I'm gonna put I guess I'm gonna put my lift levers on next so I can put the little Pac-Man gathering pallet back on. This little thing has this arm on it that's going to stop my warning pin. I got to get that up in that hole, which drops the other down where it needs to be. Except it's not sitting flat. Oh, because I'm not through the hole on the other side. spring is on it pushing it down so that part is good I'm gonna put the clip on which was inside you can tell where to put your clips because this type of clip there's a ridge for it to go into Just 
spring. I'll do that one for some reason. Levers finally, there it goes. Lifts rack stop lever. Then, when it drops down, it lets the pin turn and it turns from there to there, so it's pretty quick. But the pin is catching in both places where it's supposed to on this arm and on this arm. So, lift goes into warning, drops, lets it turn the rest of the way. So we're we ready to put this other cam on. No, I don't know. Rack and snail. Rack and snail and then cam, I think. I think that's what I feel like doing today. Your teeth go up on this little intermediate wheel right here. Because they rub on the teeth of this. clean that out. I'm not sure that I did. I like to go inside of all of these with the toothpick really well just to kind of burnish them, shines them up. It gets off a little bit of stuff sometimes. You'll also feel if you got a burr or something in there, but it will f make it fall much nicer. Because if it's been oiled in the past, someone trying to fix it and didn't know what they should do, they put oil on everything, thinking everything needs some oil, and then it's gummy up in there. You got to make sure you got it all out of there for it to fall right. <clears throat> well, I guess it goes here. This is the only post left. This is like the first one I've worked on that you didn't have to wiggle these two in together. They actually pass each other. I'm going to turn this to 12 o'clock. That's not where I want it. Right inside there, maybe one more tooth. Nicely on the flat part, but I may be a maybe a hair too far over. It may fall off the end of these ones over here. So nothing's catching, nothing's lifting because I don't have my Pac-Man on. All right, time for the Pac-Man. So I'm gonna get my warning pin up against this lever where it's pulled that in holding it good and tight and at that point I want this pin on the lift lock lever to be in the bottom of this cam but I also want to make sure that this pin is not in the teeth because if it is when the rack gets ready to fall it'll grab the teeth and your rack won't fall I may not be able to put this on there Good thing I didn't put my E-clip on yet. I've got to put two on. No, I got that one on. I got to put one more on. Okay. So I'm holding everything where I want it to be. Of course, everything shifts when you're trying to put it on there. That 
looks like it's seated down in there pretty good to me. It's not started to rise on the other side like that. It's got a little bit further to go right there. So, right in the bottom. And I'm not going to put it on super tight yet. I'm going to test it. See, it's hitting my guy right there. See what I'm talking about? The pin is hitting the teeth, keeping it from falling down. It's not turning. I don't have it on there tight enough to turn. Okay, so I've got to adjust it slightly. Okay, I'm just going to take this off and tap it down a little bit tighter. I've gone um, <clears throat> all, the, <clears throat> excuse me, all the way around on this snail doing a function test. Turning my little intermediate wheel. Make the cam lift. Goes into warning. Pops out of warning. Half hour. And now I'm back to 12 o'clock. I did pick this up and move it one tooth back where I had it before where this little arm is closer to the right hand side because it was hitting pretty much on the end point of these and I wanted it to hit more flat so that it would be more reliable. And 12. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take this off and I'm going to oil all of my pivots and we'll be, oh great, now I get to go over and do it all again. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take these off, oil my pivots, then I'll put this back on, do another function test, make sure I have it where I want it on the snail and rack settings and um, then I can work on the case. Well, there's the gong hammers to put on back here, but the lift lever and a gong hammer on the back but we're almost done see when you run out of parts you're done right <laughs> in oiling everything i i was putting a little bit on this um minute shaft and um i could feel as i rubbed it on there i could feel a little bit of resistance and i looked and there was a little bit of rust on there so with the oil on there i just took my redstone smoothed everything all off made sure it was nice and slick and it was not super clean the rust did come off so now it's smooth so i'll put a little oil on there again um, i usually just put a drop or so and then just smooth it around so it's on all my surfaces underneath the snail and I don't know if this was designed this way or not but this snail is not flat on the top there's a little curve to the top of it but you want it all turning smoothly okay and I've oiled all of the pivots easy way to, to know it's not hard from the back side because you can see everything real well but follow your wheels up. Great wheel, second wheel, escapement wheel, and your um, verge. And then the same on the other side. And that way you don't miss anything that might be hiding under a lever. Find your ends of your wheels and oil those. Um, and make sure it's a wheel. Don't You wouldn't want to oil this. This is a lever. This is a lever. So, anyway, let me put this front pieces back on and test it again and make sure that I have it um, falling where I want. And I'll put the last, the last two clips on. 
and um, we'll be ready to put the lift wires on. on the top. When it's been days since you worked on it, it's easy to forget. And I don't recall I don't recall how these lift levers were on this little star wheel. Whether each was on its own. That doesn't really want to fit in that hole. <clears throat> I put the levers back on, flipped over, put my three little Eclipse back on, and then I did a test. And my gong is right up against this tooth right here of the star wheel. So that means when it goes into warning, did you see the gong drop off of the pin? So it's going to go gong every time it goes into warning. And then cuckoo, gong, cuckoo. So if you just check function with this wheel by releasing this, lever on the side, you're going to get gong cuckoo, but if you turn the dial on the front, the intermediate wheel, so that it actually functions like it's going to when the hands are on it, then you'll find out that your clock may not be working quite right. Um, so I went back through my pictures, found a close-up, and my gong tab and the first cuckoo tab are up here and the star spike is down here and this um, second gong tab is up here and right now the way my clock is set the the star tab is up here kind of pushing it up in the air so I'm gonna have to take it apart and adjust the star down just a little bit Normally you could just loosen a screw, spread the plates, and turn your, dis dislocate this wheel from the lantern, not lantern pinion, leaf pinion of the next gear up and turn it where you want to, but this one has the three little clips that hold these posts. So I'm going to take these three clips off, open, take this nut off, loosen these two nuts, probably all three nuts, loosen them up enough to separate the plates a little bit, pull this gear forward, turn it about three millimeters and put it all back together. So I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you back again. Well I use this little q-tip stick to go down in between my second and third wheel to hold them still and uh, got the case separated, moved this down a little bit. Now I've snugged these three back up a little bit. I don't have this one on yet but let's see if it's going to be any better. I like that better. The um, the star is here. The gong little lift lever is not touching it, and this one is touching. But I don't think there's any way to not have it touch at all. It was touching previously too, so I don't think there's going to be enough resistance once that's attached to a billow to cause any extra workload on my 
strike happening. All right, one more time. I'm going to turn this intermediate wheel. That was a half hour. Let's see what it does. That's warning and nothing moved on my levers. That's good. All right, I think that's moving like I want. So this part of the movement is done and I need to put these four pieces back on there and um, we'll start working on the case. I have put two coats of the Howard's Feed and Wax on the topper and it's starting to get to the point of not soaking up more. It soaked up all the first coat, no problem. Color's really coming out good. Uh, this is my little patched wing right here. This you can tell I glued back together here and here. So this piece was broken and this was broken off of it. Um, and I made this out of some wood filler. So um, it's soft enough. You can just form it in whatever shape you want. I let it harden on there. And um, you saw it just kind of brown when I took it off the movement. I hadn't done anything with it. I put another little coat on there. I carved some little lines in it once it got dry. And then colored it with the furniture markers and a green sharpie. The green sharpie matched the green of the wings pretty good so I striped some green on there and put a stripe of brown to kind of match those so it'll look decent at a distance. You couldn't even see the brown part when it was up on the wall. It's so high up on the wall this wing covers up that one so uh, it's gonna work for me. It's not perfect but it's gonna work. I tried to look back through my phone to see the, show you the pictures of what it looked like when I first found it. It was just a, a jumble in a box. The, um, this I don't think was even attached anymore. Um, so I made him a new tail and did the same thing, colored it with marker. I'm going to touch it up some. I didn't get all of it real good. And this needs still some feed and wax. Uh, but I'm going to end up taking this whole face off because it's kind of loose right here. See it's sticking out because it pulled through, the nail pulled through this hole right here. So I'm going to take this whole face off and pull that nail out and fill the nail holes with some of that wood putty and let it harden. And that way the nail hole will be tighter and hold it down to the clock better. I'm not worried about changing out this little broken piece at the top. I wish I could see y'all. <laughs> I can't see you guys. Let's go up in the air. There we go. Okay, so um, this little top piece is the only part that was missing besides the tail and the tip of the wing. Um, but with the topper on, you can't see that little part either. So I didn't bother to make a new one of those, um, but I'm going to take this whole thing off right now and do the feed and wax all over everything. I still need to get some wood glue down between this layer right here, glue this back on. I'll take a toothpick and poke it down in there real good and clamp it. Here's my glue project. I put three little clamps on there. If you don't have any little clamp, craft clamp, little small quick grip clamps like these, <clears throat> you could lay this on its side and set a can of vegetables or your cuckoo clock weights or anything on there to just to put pressure to hold that together while it's drying. So these have been on about 20 minutes or so. I'm going to take them off. Looks good and snug. Now I'm going to flip it over. I got all the extra glue off as I clamped it so that it wouldn't leave a ridge so that my back door would go on. There's still a little extra glue in this hole. Well, this, which wouldn't affect anything except you could see it maybe.
Okay, so I'm ready to turn this over and take this front off. So this side's already up. I'm going to start here. I think the reason that this pulled through, if I remember right, when I took it off before the nail didn't come out, the nail pulled through the wood, and then I tried to just put it back through the same hole, and it it uh, didn't work out real well. There's a nail right there, I can tell. I'm going to try to get this off. I don't know if I had it off all the way last time. If I remember right, it was nailed in the roof. Yes, there's a nail coming down from the roof. Right there. Which is probably why I didn't... did what I could without taking it all the way off. But we're going to get it off today. There's a nail in that piece from the roof. back and chunk, broke a chunk of wood off. Right here. So, let's see what we can do on this side. People always take these things all the way apart when they're redoing a cuckoo clock. I do not. All right, we're down to just the one in the roof. So, two in the bottom, two from the roof. That's all that's holding this. That looked like it was a nail coming through from the other side, but it was not. So that's why my top was a little bit wobbly. I don't know why there's a hole at the top. The hole at the bottom here is opposite the grape, but it's... It looks like the grape was stuck on separate. The, like the leaves were carved out and the grape was added and the fox was added. <clears throat> anyway, this is ready to get cleaned up. So, I'm going to tap these two nails out. I'm going to fill these holes completely with my wood putty and let that dry. Trying to get this out without putting any pressure on anything. Maybe pliers. Sure is holding good for not wanting to hold. So that's all that's holding this. It's got a little tiny head on it. So when that pulled through the hole, it 
there's not any threads on the nail. Maybe there are. Maybe it's just rough from rust. I don't know, but <clears throat> anyway, I think that nail's still gonna work. It's just the hole's too big. I gotta fix the hole. All right, those nails are out. I will tap these nails up through the roof. That one's already coming up through the roof with just me pushing on it. It's kind of like a bellows tack right there. So I just have to tap that one up. Stirring up this wood putty a little bit. But it will separate on you some. And I want it to fill the hole up all the way. So I am poking it down in there. So from the back, I see I got a little bit through, so that's good. It filled the whole thing. All right, same thing with the other hole. And then I'm going to use some wood glue to put this broken off piece back so that my roof has something to stick to. All right, I put a little bit of this green and then touched it with a little bit of the furniture markers to put a little couple darker dots in there so that big hole's filled in I'm happy with that and the nails should hold much better so time to this is the best way that I found to um, treat stuff with all these crevices is just put it on a paintbrush and you can get down in the cracks real good this is the Howard's feed and wax it's got orange oil and uh, beeswax and as dry as this is, if I come back in 30 minutes, you probably won't even be able to tell I put this on here. Even though it's super shiny right now, it really moisturizes the wood. So I'm going to do both sides of this really well. And then I'm going to do the inside and the outside of the box. Do not forget the inside of your box. That's a lot of surface that's very dry in there. And don't forget your door, your your main door. Pretty much got the feed and wax everywhere, but I noticed when I was brushing across here, this was trying to separate. So I thought I would put a little, a little bit more wood glue and a couple more clamps for 20, 30 minutes before I put this all back together. This is why I use a toothpick. <laughs> it's hard to get in those little cracks.
but you can get pretty good with a toothpick. And then I'll just get my toothpick and get this extra glue off so there's not a ridge on there. Okay, I think I'm about done with the case. Came out pretty nice. Cleaned up pretty good. Nice little bead on this guy. And on the bird eye. I was able to get this tightened up where it'll stay where you put it, so that's good. So we're ready to put chains on the movement. I'm going to set that in the little hole you hang it up by. Put my chains in. Where's my little magnet? Oh, look. <laughs> the little magnet's working well. It's grabbed all my chains. Okay. Okay, now before I put that in, I want to put my bird on. And there's some little grooves in the post where someone had it screwed on tight, so I'm going to guess it goes about right there. Didn't uh, tighten it up enough. It's flopping all over.
Ugh, this is the hardest thing. I've just got the movement setting on the places where the hole where the screws grow in, so I got a rough idea of the middle putting the bird in the middle of this doorway. But every time I try to screw it, it falls forward and backward and every which way. <laughs> I'll turn the video back on when I get it attached. So now with the movement in, I'm ready to put it on a test stand and see what it's going to do. And we're going to go... Right over here. I like this little test stand now that I put this extra piece of board on the bottom. It's much more convenient to move it around to different places. Okay. Let's see if you guys can see anything there. Alright, so to test it, you're going to need some kind of hangers. I've got these antique style hangers that will fit through this chain. But if you don't have that, you can use a little bit of wire and make a little hanger of your choice. Or the easiest way is take a paper clip. And just unfold it and you've got a hanger you put the, put one end through the chain and put your, your your weight on the other end but be careful when you're pulling it up um, it this it is the small end definitely and probably the big end I know I have pulled this uh, all the way up into the movement pulling the weights up so just know that it can get up in there and stop before you get there Oh, I guess we need to put a pendulum on there, the leader wire. I haven't done that. Should have done that laying down, It'd be a little bit easier. One, one easy way to tell when you're looking at a clock from the outside, which whether it's an eight day or a one day, you can't always tell from the size of the weights. Some of the older clocks have pretty big weights on them. Um, is the pattern of these chains. If it goes chain weight, chain weight, it's a one day. If it goes, let me think. I think they're both on the outside. Weight, chain, chain, weight, then it's an eight day. I've got, um, one eight day upstairs and I think both the weights are on the outside. I don't think they're both on the inside because they're too big. They would hit each other. So, um, all right, so I got that on there. Let's get some weights on there. Yay, it wants to tick. That's a happy little sign. And, so let me get something to be able to turn the hand. I'm just going to put the hand nut, the square hand nut on there so I can turn the hand easily. Because what we're looking for is whether the movement is going to go off like it should. Get you all as straight as you can, as I can. Morning. 
Well, I got one little half hour thing and nothing, nothing else is happening. So it's good to know before you get your bellows in and everything all put back together and your special little clips back on your weights because if you got to take the whole thing back out, that's no fun. That's why I stop and test it here before I put the bellows back in. Um, okay, I found the problem. <laughs> Cuckoo's door was still stuck shut. He couldn't come out. Okay, here we go. Now we'll try this. Alright, there's a half hour door open. One o'clock. I guess that was 1.30 because that was two times. Two thirty. So what I'm looking for is does the bird post function like it should? Do these gongs function like they should? Is is my sequence going off all the way around? And I'll go through the whole thing. I'll do each half hour and each hour. But I won't make y'all sit and watch all that part. But everything seems to be working like it should. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to go on through the rest of the sequence and um, then I'll lay this down and put my leader wire on there and put my bellows in and then we'll put it back on the test stand because the bellows are going to add extra pressure and we'll make sure everything's still working. I was able to get my wire tight. I pinched the little loop down here that I had put on there. So it's got a little pressure. should lift my tail. All right. <clears throat> Some people pinch these little wires shut. You don't have to do that if your eye hole is up and down like it's supposed to be. When you put that in there and you put that in the clock, it will not come out. I promise you because if you try to take them out, you'll find out how <laughs> hard it is. So I put this on here and then I put the other end in my lift wire before I put the bellow in the clock. And I find my hole in my bellow for my little nail. And that will kind of hold it in place. And then it just needs a screw. And if you're really talented, you get that bird lift tail wire under the tail. Somehow I always end up with it up on top and then I gotta fight with it to get it under the bird. Try to get your nails and screws in the same hole that they were in so you're not making extra holes in your bellows and losing sound. Losing air. If you lose air through a hole you're losing sound. I got um, a new cuckoo clock two days ago in the mail. It's about this same time frame, 1950-1960. And um, it's got the leather bellows, original bellows. And in the corners, there's holes where it's worn out. So it makes a little bit of sound, but that air leaks out that hole. And it's the same with extra holes on the side. Alright, there's one. I took the clip off. That's good. These are just some little clips I put on when I'm storing mine. You know, it's been clipped for a week while it's been apart, so it adds extra pressure to the bellow. Makes the creases stay in. Makes it want to stay closed. Helps it with the memory in the fabric. 
And this one you'll notice is a new one because this one all got eaten up, I guess, with the mouse. He thought this was good wood to chew. She thought this was good wood to chew on. So when you order these new ones from Time Savers or Merits or wherever you order your parts from, just know that there's different ones for one day and eight day. So it's not just the size, but you need to know because of the weight that's in them, how much um, how much your clock will be able to lift. So I'm putting the wire in, swing it down, put it in my Snag the end of my lift wire, get it around everything else, and then lower it in on that tiny little hole. These are the tiniest little nails. So now I just need to, um, that one's already come off. Sometimes you cannot get these on physically once you've installed the, the bella. That's why I do it ahead of time. The angles just will not be right. But I need to pinch these lift wires shut. That one was nice. It's wonderful when it goes back together like it should. It doesn't happen very often. So my lift wires are shut. I need to put the pendulum leader wire on. Pinch it shut. That gong wire seems very high. in that hole about a half inch higher than it was before I took it apart somehow I don't feel like I put it back the same way that it was I watched my own video just to see I did flip this over because um, I had this screw aimed down and that was the part that was hitting on the on my wire on my gong so I've turned it sideways so that I can make adjustments on it Get it lined up good, and then the only thing you can do is bend this down. Bent it a little bit too far down, but um, it's not coming back as far as it was. So the lift wires you definitely have to adjust if you got a clock that's not working right. You're adjusting your bellows lift wires to get this movement like you want. You're adjusting your gong lift strike hammer. That might be close. I don't think it's out far enough. I think it's going to miss it. You want it to be just above this gong wire, the, the uh, little strike hammer. You don't want it to rest on it, it'll leave a flat sound because it'll gong and damp it out. 
you want it to hit it. You want it to hit it and bounce off. And then the resonation inside the wooden box is what gives you more sound. So having a cuckoo quail clock that <clears throat> had no holes in it and I had to adjust through the sides made me learn in a hurry where these things needed to be. So I'm about a millimeter above the gong. And you can hear how it's just sitting on it and dampening it out. I'm going to go back up a little bit more. I'm too far forward. It's not hitting it at all. Pretty close. Pretty close. There we go. So you can see it's not right on the wire. There's this much space in between. I can put the screwdriver in there, but it let, comes down and hits it and bounces back off. So that's what you're looking for to get the good resonating sound. All right, so back into the test stand now that we have the bellows in, and let's see what we got. Where did the stand go? There it is. on the subject. And some weights. All right, everything's hitting. Now that I've got these things in, so these lift wires went up and down, no problem. Wasn't interfering with this um, crutch assembly at all. And then I put these on, and boom! And now all of a sudden, I've got a big old jumble of wires right here, and it's hitting the back of my crutch. So I've got to come forward with that, and it's trying to move. That's lovely. I don't know if this is level at all right now. My pendulum leader wire is in the very front of my crutch. It's not going to stay running very good right there because there's not room for it to go back and forth at where it's pinched at the very end right there. Um, where's my, let me get the level. So normally I just would go side to side and check level. All right, that's about level that way. But I've had a clock recently that um, I did not check the front to back level and it made a difference when it was on the wall. See this one is leaning back so that's going to put the pendulum leader wire more in the foot of this crutch so when it's on the wall it should be leaning more forward so the crutch is it's a t tiny bit out of that uh, very pointed part of the crutch. Alright, so I've got the hands on. I'm going to turn the hands. 12.30. Boop, boop. I hooked the wires up backwards. Did you hear it say, cuckoo? <laughs> I hooked it up like a regular um, cuckoo clock. 
like a regular or a Hubert Her that has the gong on top and then the short lift wire and then the long lift wire. This one's backwards. It's got gong, short lift wire, long lift wire. So the long lift wire is in the back and it's supposed to come to this one. So anyway, there you go. AMS movement. Make sure you hook them up the opposite of what you normally would. Alright, I switched my wires. Let's see what we got now. This is one o'clock. Nothing stuck. Stuck in the air. Okay, so this bellows lift wire needs to be bent down a little bit so that it can close. It might have gotten bent a little bit when I put it on the wrong one. And my bird tail lift is not under the bird. I don't know if it can even go under the bird. Even if the bird is out the door, out of the way. It's so long. I don't know how men with big hands do this because I can barely fit in these little things. And this one doesn't even have like a lot of stuff. Some of them have a lot of moving parts. Music boxes, guys moving, dancing. There we go. Now we have a lift wire. Okay, let's try again. This is 1.30. That's good. Two o'clock. Two thirty. Getting a good lift on the bird. It's but bellows sound good. They're nothing nothing binding. Alright, so let's check our gong sound. And I think this will be about completion of this project. I was able to tighten up that little thing, tapping it with a hammer. I put my hand on the other side and braced it good and was able to tap it in a little bit more so that it stays tight when you lift it. It's frustrating when you lift it and you're trying to get the door out and it keeps falling down in your way. All right, this will be four o'clock. Looking good. I think we're about done with this project. Let me turn it around, put the topper on, show you how it all looks. All right, there it all is. So I'll leave it on the stand for today before I put the little actual rings back on my chains and then it'll be ready to go back on its wall. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. This movement was pretty interesting, a little different than the other ones we'd run in, I'd run into before. So, um, I want you to notice one more thing before I go: the delay of the bird coming out. Like the sound starts, but it takes a moment for that lever to get kicked over and push the bird arm out. So it starts like it's already gone cuckoo, and then here comes the bird. <laughs> Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really like this clock. I'm glad to have it in the family. Leave me some comments. Subscribe. Visit everybody else's channel on my little suggestion box here at the end. They got some good videos. They got answers to any question you could have, that's for sure. Thanks for watching.